what we're going to be talking about here is a 6607 fault. So this is a communications fault. This video is aimed at engineers, so you need to be comfortable and confident with mucking about with a multimeter, because we're going to be testing voltages on the AC side of things, but also on the control voltage side. So here we can see a 6607 fault on the controller, and you see it's showing an address of 52, which is actually the BC box. That's where it's last lost the communication, but you can tell by the flashing light on the controller that this is actually where the error actually is. Before we do any work on the actual cables, I'm just going to give them a little tug and make sure they're definitely in the actual terminals. So give a little tug on the AC side of things and just to check there, just to make sure none of those cables are loose. The other thing I can check there is the MNET cable sizing. That needs to be at least 1.5 millimeter screen cable. So that's one of the things I'm looking for. If it's below that, there's potential issues with communications faults. So that might be literally the smaller cable could actually be giving you resistance problems, which is giving you the communication fault. So checking over the PCB, looking for any obvious signs of damage. So we're looking for any burn marks, scorch marks. So what we're going to do next is we're going to check the voltages. So by checking to make sure I've got 240 volts AC roughly here, that's where checking to make sure the fuse spur is definitely switched on, that's all working, I'm blowing a fuse and things like that, but also to make sure the mains is all correct. So we'll start off with that 240 volts AC and then we'll have a look at that MNET voltage. So I'll set the multimeter to AC and we always work with Earth because Earth is what keeps us alive. So I'll go between my Earth and my Live and I've got, I've got 241 volts, 240, 241. I've got a slightly higher voltage than normal here because I've got PV on top of the roof. And then I'm going to go between my earth and my neutral and I should be getting next to nothing and then I'm going to go between my neutral and my live and about 240, 241. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change it over to DC voltage and I'm going to check that communications voltage. So on here I'm going to go between M1 and M2 and I should be seeing somewhere between 30 to 27 and a half volts DC. So we've got that 29.7 there, roughly, as far as DC voltage. So that's all correct so far. So the thing we need to do is check the addressing to make sure it's correct. If you're not too sure, we can always check on the original schematics of the project. Once we've found what's causing the 6607 fault, what we next need to do is reset the system. So we'll power everything off, then we're gonna power things back up. We need to do a specific order. So it's going to be indoors, outdoors, and then BC boxes if it's on an R2 system. If what we've been through hasn't solved your 6607 fault, don't give up. You've got the service manuals, and in the service manual, just to give you an idea, there's nine pages on 6607 fault. So we've gone through the most obvious, but it's not by any means the only reason for 6607 fault. And don't forget, you've got the after sales team. Give them a call and they can go through some ideas with you as well.